Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second season of this Mateo Perez Manager Career Mode. We started the first season at Colón. We did pretty poorly. Well, we didn't do that poorly, to be fair. I think we were like 10th in the league, most of it. Um, then we had a pretty bad run of fixtures and got fired. The only team in the world that wanted us was Arsenal de Sarandí, also in the Argentinian league. Um, we played the last nine games of the first season with them. We were pretty poor. It is one of the worst teams in the league, and we ended up bottom of the table. Now, it's our job to take this team, who's probably the worst one in, Ar in Argentina, and um, turn them into champions, or at least do the best that we can. So here we are in the second season. For the first time in this career mode, we're going to have a January transfer window or just a transfer window in general. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. I've got some transfer targets. Look at the squad before we do that so I can kind of like show you who I picked out and why. We're going to make transfers, but first we're going to look at the board objectives. And I don't, we're not going to play any games in this episode because let me show you. Um, we go to the calendar. So we kind of start the season in January because the calendar in Argentina, it's not the same as like the European leagues. It runs, well, you'll see in a sec. But so we have January, which is our transfer window. Our friendlies are not until April. And then the season doesn't start until June. So we've got six months here before the season starts between the transfer window and our first like real game. So I think this episode will just be the transfer window kind of getting our starting lineup together with what we can do with the transfer window. I'll probably play these three friendlies off camera and I might show you anything that happens that's like um, important. I'm not going to show full game highlights, but if someone's like excelling a lot or I don't know, something happens that's worthy of showing, I might show it. Um, besides that, I'll just give updates like with scout reports that come in or anything interesting that I think is worth showing. And then in the next episode, we'll start here on June 10th with our first game in the league. But yeah, so this episode, we're going January to June 10th. Um, but yeah, so let me go over and show you the board objectives before we start talking about transfers. All right, here we are in the board objectives. We've got all low ratings um, in terms of like priority, except for one, which is our financial. That's the most important thing. They want us to keep player salary growth under 15%. Now, um, I think that's doable. I'll give a little spoiler here about transfers. There's, I think, three people I want to sign. Um, I'm not sure what their wages will be yet or what 15% of our current salary is. Um, but we'll see what we do. We might have to sell someone later on. Um, I mean, we still have, I mean, the season starts one month before the summer transfer window. So, you know, if we need to unload some players to make that happen, we can definitely do that in the summer. Besides, besides that, our youth development is low. This is like the pretty, this is the most standard youth development one I get. Um, within two seasons, have one player from the youth academy. That signed in the first season, play 30% of the games in the next season. That should definitely be doable. Get 10 clean sheets this season. That'll be tough because we're still one of the worst teams. We're going to improve it, but we're still one of the worst teams. Um, but luckily, it's low priority. No continental success. And then domestic success, they just want to finish mid-table. Um, we'll push for that. There's 27 teams in the league, so figure mid-table is around, I don't know, maybe 16th to 12th, something like that. Um Remember, in the Argentinian League, the 12th place team up to the first place team gets uh, like continental football. So one through six get um, Conmebol Libertadores football. That's like the equivalent of like the Champions League in Europe. And then 12 through seven get um, Sudamericana, which is kind of like the Europa League. So, I mean, I think we should try to push for 12th. I don't think, know if it's really doable, but definitely like higher 17th and higher maybe is our goal. Um, as far as finishing mid-table. Um, so yeah, I think all of this is doable. I'll be growing the, the youth academy as we go. I might not show all of the youth reports that come in, but I'll give periodic updates. Um, so yeah, let's go now to the squad and I'll show you what we've got and what areas I'm looking to improve um, in the transfer window. All right, here we are in the squad hub. Not much has changed from last year. Just a few um, little things like we had a left back. I forget his name, actually. It may have been Perez. Um, he retired. And I think because of squad numbers, if you'll remember, we only had 18 
players, or we had the least amount of players you can have while still having a starting 11 and a bench. We had no reserve. So I think when he retired, we didn't bring anyone in because we had no transfer window or anything. I think they automatically gave us this guy um, to kind of just give us numbers. I didn't sign him. Um, so yeah, he's there now. But besides that, it's the exact same team that we've had. Um, I'll just point out some... Some important players. We have Medina here. He was a great goalkeeper last year. He's 37. He's probably going to start declining pretty soon. We've got this backup here that will be great. That will be great. We've also got another goalkeeper in the youth academy that's 64 rated. I forget how old he is, but um, I'll show you that in a little bit. We've only got one left back, Marchi, and he was pretty good. Um, I'm totally happy with him. Obviously, we need some more depth there, but I'm totally fine with him starting. Center back, we've got Canto and Pombo. They were there last year, our starting center backs. Chimino and Navas were our two like right-sided players. We had Navas play like right wing, right mid, and he was like really good actually. Um, you see, he has two positions there, right back and right mid. So we used him at right mid, um, and Chimino used we used it right back. Now Chimino is starting to age and he's starting to decline. Um, I'd like to think about getting a replacement at right back or a replacement at right either having Navas stay at right mid and getting a starting right back or moving. Navas to right back and getting a, start, a starting right mid and I'll talk about that in a little bit all right in defensive midfield we've only got Milak and now last year we played Milak and Antilef as our only two like center mids so last year we played a five back it was like a five two three so our two in the midfield is Milak and Antilef just because I felt like we didn't really have many other options we've got Mohamed he's young but he's not really growing very well um, Machado is not really good enough now, last year, we didn't, we don't really have a great striker situation. We've got Baez and Gano. So what we did was we put Krupski here, who's our best player by far, up at striker. We used Ibanez on the left, and then, or like I said, we used Navas on the right. I don't know if we're going to use a five-back this year or a four-back system. I'm still playing around with it. In fact, let me take you over to the to the lineup, like the starting lineup, and show you what we got before I tell you what positions I want to go for in the transfer market. All right, here's our starting lineup from last year. Um, as you can see, it's a five-back formation. The only difference is, like I said earlier, Perez retired, and we automatically got Kerwan, or Kerwin. Um, he wasn't there. Um, now, we could keep a five-back formation going into this year, but we need a center back, and that's one of the positions I'm targeting. So I want to get a center back and we just need some depth. We only have two. So we need a center back, um, preferably someone in the high 60s. So that's one thing. Even if we go to a four back, I still think having some depth there will be um, useful. Now, if you remember the last season, we had some problems with Krupski playing up top because every time he got in front of goal, he was just awful. Like shots off target, shots hit poorly that weren't deflected. I mean, it just wasn't a good situation. So I've been thinking about how we can play around with his position. I don't want him to be a striker, so which leads me to the point that we're going to be looking for a striker, and I've got some people lined up. I know who I'm going to go for. I'll talk about that in a sec. But I'm thinking of either putting Krupski in the midfield, like going to like maybe a 4-3-3 three, three with Milok, Antilef, and Krupski. You see there he plays attacking midfield. So having them as like a three in the midfield, keeping Ibanez out left, then like Navas out right, and then bringing in a striker. Or we could put Krupski on the left, like keep it as a five back, keep, put Krupski on the left and still bring on a striker. Either way, we can still kind of experiment with a, we can still kind of experiment with four back or five back. Now, as far as the right sided situation, um, like I said, Chimino's getting old and he's going to start regressing. I want to keep Navas in the lineup. So what I'm thinking is we're going to bring Navas back to right back in either a four back or a five back formation and then sign a new right winger or right midfielder and i've got someone lined up for that it's someone that has been um tough for us he, he plays for another team in the argentinian league and he's been very tough for us to defend and i thought why not just bring him in he's being scouted right now it's in dongala from oh god what team does he play for i think it's central cordoba we played him twice once with Colón and once with this team and he's just been incredible. So I think I want to bring him in. So that's what we're going for here. Um, in fact, let me show you what like a four back uh, sort of lineup might look like. All right. So here's what our lineup would look like with a four back formation. As you can see, our, 
our back line is pretty much the same. We just took Kerwin off. Um, so we've got Marchi, Canto, Pombo, and Navas. Now, we put Navas there assuming we can get a right-sided winger. Obviously, we have Chimino, like holding that position for now, but we would bring someone in there. Then in our midfield, we have Milok playing a defensive like midfield role. Antilef is just a central midfielder, CM there. And then Krupski using his secondary position as an attacking midfielder pushed up a little bit. I kind of um, adjusted these positions to make them fit. Um, I think that looks good, though. Ibanez would stay out on the left, and then we'd bring in a striker here to um, replace Baez. And then we'd bring in a center back, maybe better than Pombo, maybe similar level to Pombo, just to, um, just to provide some depth. So now I'm going to go over to the transfer hub and show you who I've found to um, bring into those positions. All right, here we are in the transfer hub. Now I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to start with our center back, then go to striker, then go to right midfield, right wing. So at the, at the end of last year, I started scouting some center backs. This guy, we've got about $4 million like in transfer budget. So this guy is kind of off the table. He's like pretty good. Um, 20 years old, 72 overall. He would be our joint best player in the team. Um, he, We can't really go for him. By the way, these are all players that are in the Argentinian league already. So I want to keep it as realistic as possible. Then we have this guy, um, 21 years old, 67 overall, only 2.2 million. He looks pretty good. But I think what we're going to do is go for Francisco Flores here because he's a free agent. Now, when I was scouting him at the end of last year, he was not a free agent. I forget what team he was on. But um, once... I moved over to this season. He became a free agent. 20, 21 years old, 66 overall. He's got some good physical stats. He's got not great defensive stats, but we can grow him. And I think he'd be a good addition to the team, especially as a free signing. So I'm going to go in right now and put in a bid for him. I didn't even realize he also plays right back. So that could, he could actually be our starting right back. Um, I mean, he's pretty fast too. Well, let's, I'm going to go in and, um, try to sign him up before we move on to the other positions. So they say we'll have to offer a wage between 3,100 and 4,300 to convince them to join. Let's see what we can do. This is my first time trying to sign anyone in this save because of the whole transfer uh, window glitch last year. But okay, let's skip through this a little bit. I think squad roll, let's try to get him on important. Good. I'm totally fine with five years. Hopefully they offer us the um, wage. I'm okay with that. No need for release clause. Come on, offer us the wage so I don't have to... Oh, that's perfect. Signing bonus 23. Yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Let's accept that straight off. All right, we've got a new center back slash right back in. I didn't realize he played right back. We'll have to put some serious thought into whether or not he can fulfill that right back role. He might. He's got the speed for it. Well... Let's continue with our signings and see. Let's let's play around with the lineup after we sign these players. All right, now looking at the striker position, um, I had four good options here, and this guy's pretty tempting at 2.2 million. He's 22 years old, 69 rated. In fact, I'm still kind of thinking about it. The only problem I have is he only has 70 finishing, but he's like his athletics, his physical stats look pretty good. I mean, he's got good enough sprint speed. He's six foot tall. But man, that 70 finishing is tough for me to get past. Plus his ball control isn't that good. The guy that I want most, I think, is this guy. Just because his physical stats, he, he's so quick and agile on the ball. Plus he's got 72 finishing, which I guess I, isn't that much more. Um, he's a little bit older, but I think I'm going to prioritize the pace and the physical stats here. Because that really makes him stand out to me. Plus he's only one overall less. And he's... Eight hundred, six hundred thousand dollars cheaper. So, I think we're gonna go for Eric Ramirez here, sixty-eight overall, for one point six million. I'm gonna go in and approach to buy right now. Let's go ahead and offer a transfer. It said we could offer one point five. So I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go in for one point five five. Let's see if they take that. 20 oh wow if they're gonna ask for that much then i don't know if we can do this let's um wow okay let's go 1.8 well if this guy if they were asking for 21 if 2 million 100 000, then i think the other guy that's 69 rated is gonna probably be like more like 
26 or 2.6 million. Let's try 1.8. All right, they agree to that. I'm I'm okay with paying 1.8 for that. We're getting a ton of pace up top. Plus, he's a good finisher. Um, yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Let's go and negotiate the contract and try to get him into the club. So he wants a crucial squad role. He's going to be starting every game, so I'm totally okay with that. Um, four years, I'm totally cool with that. No release clause is what we expected. Come on, give us a wage. 5,400, you know, he's a lot better than the, the center back, and he, I really want him to kind of be a leader of this team. I might try to put that down to, like, just 5,000 and see if they accept that just to give us some wiggle room. Remember, we have to um, keep player salary growth under 15%. He's adamant on 5400 Okay, you know what? Let's just go for it. I mean, at some point, you have to spend money if you want to be successful. So we're going out here and we're spending money. And I think, I'm not sure exactly what it said. I think we have like 1.7 or 1.8 million left. Um, we'll see if we can utilize that on another player. Um, actually, I'll go and talk about our right-sided midfielder situation here. Oh, and we'll see, um, what's his name? Ramirez, I'm pretty sure, show up right now. All right, now that we've got a striker and a center back in, the last thing I really wanted to look at was right wing slash right midfield, something on the right side. Um, now, this is the guy that's been so good against when we've played against him. He's been, like, unbelievable. So I'm really interested in bringing him in. We're scouting him right now. We don't have the scouting report back. Now, I went to see if, what the market value was, and it says this team will not sell the player as he's too important, which isn't great. He's got 1.3 market value. Maybe we could get him for under that. He is an older player. I don't know what his overall is yet. The only other right midfielder I've really found is Matias Godoy, um, and his market value is just too high for us to um, reach out. However, I feel like we could utilize Navas on the right midfield slash right wing, and our new center back signing, who also plays right back, can fit into that role. And we have a pretty complete picture there without having to go out and get another player. But if Indongala is available and I feel like the price is right, I will try to go for him. But um, that's all the transfer business I really wanted to take care of in this episode. Let's go back to the lineup screen and see what our new team looks like. Okay, so here's what our five back sort of formation would look like. We've got Kroski on the left, Ramirez in the middle, our new signing, Navas on the right still. We've got Milak and Antilef in the middle, Marchi, Canto, Pombo, and Flores, our new signing there in center back. And then we're going to keep Chimino on like because in a five back that's like a wing back sort of thing and i don't want a center back trying to do that although he's way faster than chimino in fact well we just don't really have anyone i mean i guess we could put crow in there actually you know what i think i'd rather have crow out there than chimino yeah let's let's roll with that i mean he's faster his his like technical abilities are a lot worse but his physical and his pace are better also, he plays right mid as well and left back. That's good to know. So, yeah, I think that's what our... Actually, I'd probably put Kanto there. Um, that's what our five-back formation sort of looks like. Now, let's take a look at what our four-back formation looks like. All right, here's what our four-back formation would look like. So, we've got... So, Krupski moves to the midfield because now we have three midfielders. And we've got Ibanez on the left, Ramirez up top, Navas on the right. Midfield, Krupski at sort of attacking midfield. Milak holding midfield, empty left, just... It's just central midfield. That's his natural position. Then, Marchi at left back. Pombo and Canto stay as our center backs. And then Flores, our new signing, moves out to right back, his secondary position. Then we can use Kerwin as like a backup fullback sort of situation. He could also play right mid. Um, and we still got Chimino there that could play right back. So now all of a sudden we've got a lot of depth at right back, um, but not much else. We don't really have a backup striker. I mean, we do, but they're not really that great. Muhammad can come and sort of help with the midfield. Um, we've got a couple of wide midfield backups. But um, like I said in the last season, I think we're going to supply a lot of our depth in this team from the Youth Academy. In fact, I'll give a Youth Academy update right now before I start simming forward. Um, and, you know, once I'm done simming forward, like I said, the first real game won't be until the next episode. So I'm just simming forward to see if anything happens. Before we do that, let's check out the Youth Academy. All right, so here's our Youth Academy. You'll probably notice a new addition from the last time I showed it, which is 
John Carrillo here, a goalkeeper, already 64 overall at 16 years old. He could really be a player of the future here. He's already ready to be called up. Um, I'm not going to do that yet. But yeah, his potential is 84 to 94, which looks really good. Our second best player is Juan Carlos Paredes. Um, he's like a winger. He's only 60 overall, but he has some potential. Not quite into the 90s, but close. And then we've got Khaled Ibrahim here from Egypt, an attacking midfielder who's got some great potential. Um, I think I'm actually just going to get rid of Rafael Munoz here. He's just not quite good enough. Um, and I don't want him to take up space. And then we've got Kowalsk. I'm not sure how to say it, but I mean, he looks like he could be pretty good. He's just, I just don't know if that he'll ever get there in time. And then we've got Evaristo Marin, who once again could be really good, but I don't know if he'll ever get there in time. All right, so that's all of our players, all of our objectives and everything. It's the transfer window sort of done unless anything happens. I'm not really interested in selling anyone at this point just because we need the depth. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start simming. I'll check back in if anything interesting happens. All right, we've got a couple of transfer offers. One of them I've already rejected for Krovsky. It's from Boca Juniors. Now, usually when a bid comes in from a big team, I'm inclined to sell the player because I think it's realistic, but he's the only thing holding this team together. I'm interested in this bid for Mohammed for 750000 He's only worth six seventy five, as you can see there. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept it, I think, from Sparta Rotterdam and just get some money. I mean, we didn't use Mohammed once last year, maybe one time as a sub, but I just feel like if we're not going to use him, let's just get rid of him. So I'll go ahead and accept that. Mohammed is out and we've got some more money in the bank. Plus, we're trying to save money on wage, remember. All right, we've got another big transfer offer here from Austin FC for Joaquin Bigo, our backup goalkeeper. Now, because we have that goalkeeper in our youth academy, I think I'm just going to go ahead and sell him. I mean, that's a lot of money we're getting into the bank. Let's accept that offer. And then prom and then if it goes through, I'm going to go ahead and promote our goalkeeper from the youth academy into the first team. All right, as you can see here, we've got Bigo sold and Mohamed sold. We had a loan offer for Machado, but I rejected it just because we need depth. I'm going to go promote our Youth Academy goalkeeper into the first team right now. We've got a transfer offer in for Marchi for over a million dollars, but we just need a left back. So I'm going to have to reject that offer because we just don't have any depth. We, we got to keep him. All right, we've got a big problem here. LAFC and the MLS just agreed to pay... The release clause for Antilef for almost $3 million. I don't want to lose Antilef, so I'm going to go in and try to give him a new contract without the um, release clause in it. Because I'd really like him to stay. He's a part of my plans. Well, how he's 25. Yeah, I got to keep him. I'm going to go in and renew his contract, and hopefully he accepts something. Um, cause I really don't want to lose him. It would really mess up everything. So let's hope that he re-signs here. Yeah, he's definitely going to be crucial. Yeah, we can do a one year contract extension. Disregard release clause. Awesome. He's on 4,400 currently. Oh, let's not do that. Let's put him on 40, 4,700. Would he take that? Okay, awesome. All right, now we don't have to worry about that. We've got empty left. No release clause to worry about. That's handled. He's still in our starting lineup. All right, after a lot of simming, we finally made it to June on the eve of our first game of the league season against Defensa. Um, I haven't decided what formation I'm going to use for that next for this first game. Um, I'm just going to figure that out in the next episode before we start. Um, the preseason matches went pretty poorly we lost two and drew one Krupski scored twice Ramirez our new striker scored once and then Marchi our left back scored once um so yeah that's how we're looking before this first game I mean we've only got let me look at the calendar we've got let's see four games before the transfer window opens again so I'm going to use these four games to sort of assess who we need because of those sales we made earlier um during the transfer window where do I find... Oh, finances. We have a $4 million transfer budget again. So I'm going to use... Like starting in the next episode, I'm going to start scouting some new people. And we can actually buy some more players in July and August. 
So um, yeah, that'll be it for this episode. Um, like and subscribe. Twitch if you want to see the behind the scenes and watch me make these videos. Everything is streamed live over there. Um, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode for the start of our second season um, in the career mode in our first full season here at Arsenal.